All right. You ready? Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of Chasing Dreams podcast. Today, we are talking about hashtag Black Girl Magic, the real dream. And I have someone here who does Black Girl Magic better than anyone I probably have known in my, <laughs> in my life. But we have Miss Teddy Renee. She is the owner of United Kingdom. She is also the host of the Queen's Conversation podcast. If you are not following the Queen's Conversation podcast, please do so. That's K-W-E-E-N. Um, she is a speaker. And I have this quote from her website. It says, Teddy has dedicated her life to helping young adult women navigate major life transitions. Um, and probably my favorite fact, she is my beloved soror and member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> Please welcome to the podcast, Miss Teddy Renee. Yay, thank you. I'm so excited. I'm super excited because we were just talking about you thinking about your podcast like a couple yes. of weeks ago. Yes, yes. And yes, now yes. we are, and it's like, a, it's life. <laughs> it's, it, it's real. It's real, real. It's for real, for real. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. I've definitely been working on like that take action. Mm -hmm. um, and do you know, if it's something that I feel like I'm supposed to be doing, just do it. Right. And so here we are. Right. And you know, that's my thing, like that whole don't procrastinate. Like if it's really important, get it done and then be done with it. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. But thank you, thank you, thank you for being a guest um, and sharing your time with us. The real purpose of this Chasing Dreams podcast is really to highlight different types of dreams so that the audience can see themselves in it. Yeah. Um, and especially with us talking about Black Girl Magic um, and how fabulous of a dream it is, I just want to say thank you for sharing this moment with us. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. You know, I have all the dreams. All, <laughs> all the dreams. The dreams. <laughs> With that being said, my first question is, what is the dream for you? Um, so for me, the dream is making it easier for other people to achieve and accomplish their dreams. Like there are so many things and hurdles and just ridiculous obstacles that I had to get through to even make any type of headway in any of my businesses or any major accomplishment that I made in life. And every time I sat there, I was like, it should not be this hard. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be this hard. There are way too many resources and way, way too many other people who have done things to have to start from the very beginning every single time you want to try something new. So the dream for me is to help other people achieve their dreams with less, not effort, but less obstacles and stress and just so they can preserve the energy and actually put it towards their dream. Absolutely. That's such a phenomenal dream. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my dream is pretty similar. I think I, I do it a little differently, but definitely to like a each one teach one kind of perspective. Like if I learned something that helped, I want to tell everybody like, this is what I learned. Here's how I can help you. Let's move on together. Um, so I definitely can appreciate that, especially, um, you know, within the context of Black Girl Magic, there's so much that we could be doing differently mm -hmm. um, that if we just learned it, if we were exposed to it, like we're already killing the game, but imagine if we had the same starting points. Right. And that's a, that's a big reason why like United Kingdom even exists. Like I am, I literally was just on the phone with somebody at work um, and I was just like, you know, I don't even think the team realized, like I'm just straight from the hood. Like I am, Born and bred, PG County, District Heights. People always talk about there's no hoods in PG County. Yes, there are. There are. There are like there are hoods in PG yeah. County. There are gangs in PG County. There are poor people in PG County. Like we got crackheads, entrepreneurs, business millionaires. Right next door. Everything. Like everything, and right, right next door. The neighborhood shifts so seamlessly that you literally be like, wait, am I still in the same area? Exactly. And, you know, I grew up in PG County as well. Yeah. Um, we first lived in Landover, which is very much a hood in PG County. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Upper Marlboro, which is like very much like I didn't even know I lived in the hood until we moved to Upper Marlboro. And I was like, oh, right. that was the hood we were in. And funny enough, they're Got literally it. five minutes away from each other. Literally. Literally. Like Literally. now you have like, uh, like right there, like Landover and then like Woodmore. And they're yep. two completely different things right off of the same street, two lights Once away. Once you pass that highway, that's it. It's a whole different environment. Whole different life. 
it, <laughs> and I'm really waiting for the Landover Mall to come back. I just feel like it's a staple in all of our lives. Yeah. Well, you know, they're now what they're doing over there to um, Hampton Park. Um, they've done the groundbreaking, and that place is going to be amazing. And I'm, it's God's plan. However, yeah. <laughs> my mom's house was right on Bricey Road, which is in between okay. Landover, like literally, like one one thing says it's Landover, one thing says it's Road, one thing says it's Largo. Yep. It's five <laughs> minutes from right there where they've done the groundbreaking. It's going. It the property value of there is about to skyrocket. Oh, I'm sure it was not God. Why plan you can't, us. child? Yeah, it was my God's plan for us to, to keep that, and I'm just going to have faith that that was for the best. But yeah, kind of like okay, yeah, <laughs> better yeah. that that oh, man, that place is about to be popping. <laughs> it's yep. about to be so popping. Like I'm just like looking at the plans, and I'm like, oh, this yeah. place is going to be amazing. I can't. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Neither here nor there. Yeah. But. Uh, at what point did you like realize the dream and how has it changed throughout the years? So I realized the dream just now when you asked, asked me the question. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair I was, enough. I wasn't expecting that question, but you know, I, I do so many things and I've had so many ideas. Like I have probably about five or six different like legacy journals is what I call them. Like when I have an idea of something, I write it down and like eventually one day I'll do this. But I never finished the journal. So it's like literally maybe like three pages in each journal and then I lose them and they're in a the box and then they're, you know, so they're like all over the place. And that's something that a lot of people will say about me. Like I appear to be all over the place with a lot of different things, but it's because I'm interested in a lot of different things and a lot of different ways. And I see a lot of different problems and my superpower is overthinking, but in the way that I overthink to a solution, like okay, so this is a really big problem. How do we fix it? Why is this a problem? What can I do to add to, to the solution versus to keep facilitating or exacerbating the problem? So like I um, own Paraphernalia University, which is a custom apparel business that I started because there were no cheap, quick, local Greek gear <laughs> um, vendors in the area. When I went to Bowie, like you either could go to College Park, which never had real stuff, or you can go all the way to Baltimore to Joe Mann's, which took forever. Or you could go to like online where all they had were like the white fraternities and sororities. Mm -hmm. And then they got your royal blue all wrong or your gold was just yellow. So I started that business to kind of fill that gap. And now where everything is online and online stores are just like t-shirt stores are like a dime a dozen. My solution has been, okay, so how do we stop competing with them? And now how do we provide for them? So that whole vision kind of is completely different from just the growth of the economy and technology. Um, for United Kingdom, it's um, it's a vision I tried to run from for. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? <laughs> I want to say maybe about a good 10 months. I was just like, you know, I could do this and I could just create like this network of just like connecting people to help each other. And then I was like, nah, I don't really want to do that. Like, there are so many better connectors in my life. Like, you know, my line says to Tanisha, like, everybody loves her. She's, like, super supportive. Like, she would be better at doing this. Or, you know, Alicia is so passionate and compassionate. People just kind of not gravitate towards her. But people just keep asking me for advice and asking me, do you know someone? Do you know someone? Do you know? Do you know? How can I? I have it. And I was just like, all right, let me make a logo. And let me see. Let's come up with a name. Let's do this. And then this summer, I, um, you know, started getting or seeing and hearing fundraising startup, tech startup. Like, and I'm just like, what's the difference between, like, a founder and a CEO? What's the difference between a startup and a small business? And that led me to Founder Gym, where Mandela was, like, um, offering some free courses, like, workshops. And I was like, one was, how do you know if you should fundraise? And I was like, oh, that's coming up. Maybe I'll register for it. And I didn't do it, right? <laughs> so then I'm doing, like, I guess my friends and family fundraising for a couple of things that I wanted to do for United Kingdom and Paracanel University and just letting people know that, hey, I have these businesses. Just in case you didn't know, can you donate a dollar to each? Right. And someone actually offered to cover the full cost of what I was asking for to grow, to, to do the next phase for Paracanel University. But they wanted me to combine the two and they wanted equity. And I was like, 
I understand. I know what the word equity means, but I don't quite understand what this would mean. How it all works. Right. And I, but I know I don't want anyone else owning Perkinet University or any parts of it. You know, like Queen Bill, that's a different story, but that is, that's mine. It'll always be mine. That's, that's my thing. So I declined. And then literally like the next week, the Mandela course came up again. And I was like, you know what, let me just apply for this. And I did the workshop and I was like, all right, so this is exactly what I want to do. I do want to start a tech startup with United Queendom. It, it is something major and grand. And now the work begins. So it, it's, <laughs> it's, changed, it's, changed yeah, it's changed a lot and it, it changes daily. Mm. It's very difficult to kind of express what you want to do and how you want to do it in a way that's concise but impactful. Right. Um, especially when you're still in the process of identifying who exactly needs the most help in the way that you want to provide it. So Definitely. That makes sense. Yeah. And I do want to just say this one thing. Earlier you mentioned how you kind of feel all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I, too, <laughs> I, too, resonate with that. I used to call it career ADHD. Mm. Like that was my thing for a while. And then I had to realize like that could be a strength. So when I think about like my, I don't know, heroes or people I look up to from a business perspective, Mm -hmm. Candy Burris is my it. Like that's who I want to be. Like that's who I want to be professionally in this world. Mine is Mona Scott. Love it. Same (laughs) concept though. Like if you really look at the two of their Mm -hmm. lives, it's the same, like, they do what they want to do and they build phenomenal businesses around it all under the umbrella of it's whatever I want to do. Yep. <laughs> Love it. And it's, it's no, like I, I realize now that being all over the place is, it seems that way. And you know, where you are, it's like piece over here, piece over here, piece over here. And I'm a puzzle person. Like the bigger the puzzle, the better. And I love it. And it's like, I know this, that you're not always going to see the full picture. Even if you see the picture, None of the pieces make sense until you start to put some of them together and you kind of, you know, puzzle lovers know you start with the outside mm-hmm. and then you work and with then you your way. way. <laughs> and then you see like different little sections. So eventually you'll have different little puzzles, like all separate, and then you'll bring them all together. And it's just this thing. And you're like, ah, oh, that was great. That's how that was supposed to come to Exactly. Like, oh, so that actually, I thought it was blue, but it was really gray and green. And okay, that makes more sense now. And I mean, life's the same way. So like, even with my, my career, when I tell people, like, I do like a uh, functional, like I'm in IT and they're like, oh, what do you do? Do you code? And I'm like, no, like I basically organize. And I guess what a lot of people would say, like project management, like mm-hmm. from what their understanding is outside of like IT and, and building like technical products, but like all of the functional pieces, the things that have to be in place in order for you to, be able to code them and put it together and know what you're doing. I do all of that. And they're like, how the hell did you get there? Like I used right. to be in psychology degree and I have like in special education and I used to work at an ice cream shop and an online school. And they're like, how? However, every single job that I've ever had has come together to make me the perfect person for this type of thing. Exactly. Perfect. And it's like, there's no, it's no coincidence that when we were thinking of just names for United Kingdom, um, me and Preston did it. Um, Preston Fritz and had no name. It's absolutely no coincidence that the word United is a part of it because it is to a lot of people a scattered brain type of concept where you can get help in any life area, so like finances, health and wellness, business and career, just life experiences and like relationships all in one place. Because the way that things are now, it's like you have to find a niche market and you have to mm-hmm. get this one thing that you're good at and then offer services. Well, life doesn't work that way. It's never worked that way for me, right? Yeah, whenever, yeah. whenever I have a problem, it's like 20 problems and they're all over the place and it's finances and health and relationships and work and business. And it's never been, you know, there's not one place to get help in all in that unique combination of like life challenges. So like your problems being isolated and working on them one by one, it's costly. It's time consuming. It's hard. It's stressful. Speak on it. You know? <laughs> so it's like having one place, especially with the internet, like Instagram, you can find, a million consultants, a million influencers, a million experts, but you don't know who is the right one for you. You don't know 
who really has the knowledge to help you for your specific financial issues or your specific relationship goals. But United Kingdom brings all of that into one place. And now it is a platform where we will match you with your ideal experts, not just one, but we'll create a team for you through you know, matching your needs with their expertise so that you can address your unique combination of life issues and not have to go to 20 different websites to do it and spend you know $150 an hour consulting fees for each of them. So. Is that the going rate for consulting? Like, I feel like my price needs to go up. I mean, it depends. I mean, it really it depends on, um, you know, I have a, a few different services. Mm-hmm. And hourly, yeah. I mean, I don't know how other people come up with their money. But it's like I've taken, like, what it costs for me, for my job to have me to do the work that I'm doing and versus what I really think I should be getting paid. And then how much structure I have to put into building out my services for people mm-hmm. so that they can actually have access to it. And then I, you know, had a tax and divided it and do gave you them, you a discount, but you know, um, so yeah, I mean, I've seen that, I've seen them range from $50 to $500 an hour. And again, it's all just dependent upon like where you are. And that's another thing. Like there are some great communities out there, but everyone can't afford them. Yeah. Not afford them. So United Kingdom is actually for members will be 100% free as long as you make progress on your goals. As long as you're making progress, you never pay a penny. Love it. Love it. Love it. Results driven. I'm here. Exactly. Um, but I definitely want to point out, you said life is like a puzzle. I definitely agree. And it's almost like the puzzle, but then the picture on the box is a little, it's a little blurry. You can't really see what it's supposed to be. There might be a few pieces missing. Yeah. And you still got to figure it out. Still have to. I was I believe the funny thing about it, right, is that when I was a kid, like it's like when you're a kid, like I feel like you get to see exactly what you're supposed to be doing when you're an adult, and then it's like the challenge is navigating through life so that the world does not skew that vision. Yes. Yeah. That part. You know, when people say, like, kids are the most pure, like, th- my daughter, Billy, tells me, Mommy, I want to do this. She told me the other day she wants to be a pilot. She also wants to be a figure skater. She also wants to be a firefighter. She also wants to be um, a singer. And she wants to be a teacher. I said, okay, Go for it, Stacey. You all of them. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Like, th- who knows? Go for it. Yeah. She may be an actress and get to be all of them one day. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We were going to encourage it because one day that, that may absolutely be exactly the path that she's supposed to be on. Absolutely. So tell me about your first experience with Black Girl Magic and what did you learn from it? <laughs> so my, and this is going to be, I don't know how it's going to come out. My <laughs> mom was my first experience with Black Girl Magic. Okay. It wasn't until I got to college that I really like understood like how great she was. Like we had very, she's a Taurus, I'm a Scorpio, and we had very best friend, worst enemy type of relationship. <clears throat> um, she had um, substance abuse or drug abuse issues throughout most of my life. So when I got to college though, we actually had like a very consistent relationship. <laughs> she actually spoke at Bowie for a program that my line sister was hosting. And I don't know why, like when they invited her to come speak, I actually it kind of clicked that like, you know, she really has done a ton even with her history and her past like my mom is the smartest person I've ever known and like people just naturally supported her and everything she did she just had a way with just natural marketing and drawing people in she was either your worst enemy or your best friend but she was all she always loved you mm-hmm. and it's like even now when people are like you look familiar and I'd be like was it cheerleading and they're like oh yeah you're Tina's daughter and da, da, da. I always have to be I'm kind sorry of- is her name Tina yeah Tina that's my mama name. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> Crazy. I was they're like, amazing. wait, wait, wait. Because I get that all the time, too. Oh, you're Tina's baby. Yeah. And it's funny, right? Because my little sister's name is Tiana Nicole. Oh, my goodness. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, when people say, like, mention her, I have to always kind of brace myself because I'm like, which side of her did you know? <laughs> was it the real, real good side or did she cuss your ass out a couple times? Because she, she was good for all of that. But... She was absolutely my first experience with real black girl magic. She 
owned her own business. Um, she worked in um, like medical insurance equipment and supplies for years. Like even as a functioning um, addict, she always had a job when she wanted one, never had an issue finding one. Eventually she started her own business from the ground up when nobody would help her. She found one or two people to kind of support her and turned that into something that allowed other people to have um, a little bit of independence and financial freedom. Like she was one of the first people that I knew job wise that would give you like a flexible schedule. Like you could work this many days for this, this many days, you know, this many hours and still get your full paycheck without having to take this much time off. And then she started a cheer. My sister was a cheerleader for like Pepper Mill Rec. And for whatever reason, she either hated it or my mom didn't like the structure of it. So she said, okay, fuck it. I'm going to start my own cheer. <laughs> And she started her own gym, six seasons. Just no knowledge of cheer, just I'm going to do it, and it's done. And then Exquisite All-Stars were born. And it's something that a lot of people, it's still, uh, it still had a significant impact on a lot of people. Mm-hmm. One of our, um, Jay, her, she's a Morgan State cheerleader right now. And I've been looking at her pictures at home coming her mom, and I'm like, oh, my God, my mom would be so proud. But, like, that type of, like, long-term, the longevity of, like, the legacy of, doing something that you she was not qualified my mom never cheered a day in her life okay oh wow (laughs) you know she used to play volleyball but but if you hired a coach you don't really got to exactly she did and and she learned what she needed to to coach the the younger ones and more so it was giving them the structure they needed to grow through the program and she hired everyone else to teach tumbling and the higher levels and basing and stunts and all of that and she just managed the business and she was able to attract a unique she had a very unique vision of uh, we black, we from the hood, we gonna come out here. It was like the real life, bring it on. Like, And that was the attitude that she wanted them to have. She's like, I don't want you going out there chilling like these preppy white girls. I want y'all to go out there and shake it and twerk it and pop it and do a handstand on the wall. And if that's in the routine, that's in the routine. They like, but on the wall. <laughs> no, literally, we have, there are videos. I like when the music come on, go, go, come on. You see the girls, you're sitting there and you're like, this is so inappropriate, but it's them. Let them be yeah. them. showed and reflected in their performances. And they were champions. They won a lot, you know? So yeah. that's absolutely my vision of Black Girl Magic. Whenever I feel like I shouldn't be doing something, I always think about her like, you're yeah, okay. <laughs> like, your team is doing Should. it. Should. Let's you laugh. <laughs> And just to add to the to the list, uh, I did all star cheer my whole life, oh, nice. <laughs> and I'm coaching now too, and I absolutely love it. So I might be like a like a real sister. Like I know we're sisters, but I know like I might actually be your sister. You <laughs> might be. Yeah, my little sister still coaches. She coaches for um, Power now. She used okay. to cheer for she's cheer for Exquisite, and then she cheered for Crimson Heat. And Power is actually in the old Crimson Heat space. So she does okay. and stuff there now. She's all in it. Yeah. How yeah. crazy is it to have little sisters that are grown? I don't know. Because mine is, first of all, she's legal. She done got her first tattoo. She's in college. I'm like, whoo. I'm my not sister, okay. Sister, I have a niece. She's two. Okay. My little sister's grown, grown. And it's just yeah. like, I'm like, I'll be sitting there, I'll be like, I'll be trying to be big sister, and I'm like, no, leave her alone. It's okay. She's, she's a little so now. I'm for it. Like, ooh, okay. Child. And she's so cute, too. She's like everything I'm not. She's oh. funny, she's fit, she's buff, she's in shape. She's the makeup girl, and her hair is always cute, and she's just, she's everything. She's my mom's girly girl. Me, I wanted to go and shoot guns and be an ROTC and twirl rifles. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Same here. So my little sister, since she could walk, has been in heels, um, makeup well before I thought it was okay. Like, I, right. For makeup for the first time at 27. That is not her story. By I didn't even color my hair until I went to college freshman year. Yeah. yeah. My little sister exactly. had colored hair, weaves, all types of stuff in like high school. And I'm like, what is this? Exactly. Okay. Who? Oh, my girl, we can have a whole oh, conversation oh, about I'm that. Just like, how? How? Have you thought? I mean, granted, we are we're ten years and two weeks apart, but still, you said ten years. Ten years and two weeks apart, literally to the day. So, me and my sister are ten years, and probably like she's the September fifth. I'm October eleventh. So we're like a month apart, but on the other end, I don't know yeah. how to do that math, but whatever. <laughs> so like nine and almost 10. I, was born, I think like 
that year she was born, I feel like Thanksgiving was the following year. Like this year, how Thanksgiving's late. She was born like that Thursday before. Yeah. yeah. I'm November 8th. She's November 22nd. Both. Yeah. Craziness. Are we one human? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love you even more. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So my next question, how do you embody and encourage Black Girl Magic through United Kingdom? So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the best way or the way that people ingest it the best way. But like, I just share what I need. And this is exactly how United Kingdom started on Instagram. Like what I needed that day, I just put out there. So like I was having a really tough day. And I just started like posting like inspirational quotes from like mm-hmm. black women that were just like, that I just like that day just made me feel better. So I was like, you know what? Post it. And like when I do like even the Queen Conversations podcast, I take titles or um, topics of things that I'm seeing repeatedly in my life or that I'm dealing with and going through and that I can speak through or a situation that I just finished because it's like, I tell people all the time, I'm nobody special and I don't ever think that my issues, my thoughts, my success or accomplishments are unique to me, Mm. like somebody else may. So I just like to share and tell people, no, I'm lazy. I procrastinate. I'm an asshole. I do all these things wrong. (laughs) However, I'm cute. It's like, I'm successful. I managed this. I managed that. And we're still here. (laughs) You can too. Like, it's not going to be easy, but it's absolutely possible. But here's some things I learned might make it a little easier for you. If you listen, and even if you don't listen and it works out for you, share with me so we can tell the world. So just putting it out there and just, yeah. you know, whether people listen to it or not or see it or not one day they will. Yeah. And, and you're yeah. being the change you want to see in the world. Absolutely. That is the, that is the, probably one of the quotes that, that resonates with me most that and like be who you needed as a kid. Mm. It's like when I was a kid, people used to always tell me just be quiet. Stop talking. Teddy, stop talking. You know, people still say, oh, you was a badass kid. And I'm like, why? Because you wouldn't stop talking. That's not bad. That doesn't make me bad. You know, but it's like, it kind of, it lets me know that the world does not want specifically, especially black girls to speak up and say anything. And have an opinion. Have an opinion or or feel like they can have an opinion. And that's, that's completely right. Even at work, you know, like, and I was talking to my best friend of this yesterday. He's like, I don't, I am not a fan of, um, people telling me what I can and cannot, shouldn't, shouldn't do, or treat. Like I had a conversation about like priorities with a coworker the other day, and his response was, "I'm not arguing with you about this." And I was just like, first of all, in my head, right? <laughs> I was talking to, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I was just like, "There's no argument." However, <laughs> these are a list of my priorities. I'll get to that when this can be done, and that's the end of it. But having to knowing that that is the reality of most, a lot of black women in many spaces helps me to realize like when I was younger, all that talking was for a reason. Cause when I got older, there were going to be so many people who were not comfortable with talking and I could speak to them and with them and for them. So mm-hmm. that's what we do. I just talk. Absolutely. <laughs> and so you said your, uh, one of the quotes you live by is be the change that you want to see in this world and be who you needed as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to share real quick mine. So the Tupac quote where he said, I may not change the world, but I guarantee you I'm going to mm-hmm. spark the mind that does like, that for me. Like I don't have to change the world, but if I provoke nudge, urge, whatever, the person who's going to change the world, I've done my job. Absolutely. I've done my job. Yeah. Like, even like when people talk about like, oh, in college I was this and I was this class president and I was the queen of my university and stuff. Like when people, if you ask people what I was, it's like, oh, yeah, Teddy was always around. That's it. She was always there. She was always supportive. Like I was I'll always had my hands in something. You need some help. I hope you could have flyers. Here are some ideas. Here are some people. Here are some resources. But I don't necessarily need to take the credit for it. I don't need to be seen. I don't need to, you know, I mean, it's nice to be seen and to be heard and things. Um, it's good for your um, super ego or your id and all those wonderful things. But it's not necessary to, for me, to have that type of recognition. I want my recognition in my coins. <laughs> Like, okay, like, recognize me by giving me a raise. Recognize Always me. Always stay gracious. Best exactly. revenge is your paper. Like, recognize me by supporting me or yeah. sharing, you know, the things that I do with other people. Like, yes. recommend me for speaking engagements or recommend me to friends or family or, you know, 
promote something for like, like show me recognition through the belief and support in what I do. That's, yeah. that's cool. And I'm, you know, I'm always going to support people. I will make a note though, a very hefty permanent note when I don't see support from certain people. Mm-hmm. I'll still support them, but it, it, it's not going to be like a go out of my way type of thing. Like there's some people who every single thing they touch, I'm the first person putting it out there because I just believe in them so much and because they are genuine and they really stand for me what they say they do and they are super supportive to everyone. Like those are people that should have the spotlight always. Like they're destined for just amazing things and there's so many people supposed to be connected to what they have Mm -hmm. that I'm going to help push that out there. Mm -hmm. Some people they're nice and what they're doing is great but if you don't have that like you were saying yesterday like that community type of perspective like mm-hmm. we all were in this together type of thing you help me I help you with nothing to gain I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna still put it out there but it's not gonna be like all day every day on my feed who is this girl she keep posting because she just keep posting her it's yep. not gonna be like, like you you might have to pay for marketing <laughs> listen let me send that invoice for you <laughs> right <laughs> like you you want it, you want me to post that on your United Kingdom page you might actually have to do this. some other people though nope it's just what you're doing is enough here share it with the world mm-hmm. yeah. I love it I love it so what are some challenges that black women face that we should be more aware of sub point of the question like what are some potential downfalls of black girl magic so just an example like for me i think one of the downfalls of black girl magic is the black superwoman complex Mm -hmm. um what are some uh challenges downfalls that you think we should all be more aware of so i think that it probably goes into that same thing superwoman not only feeling like we have to do everything but other people perceiving that we can do everything we don't need help Like one of my biggest things has always been asking for help because I assumed that people wouldn't give me help because they see me as someone who doesn't need help just because I I have been so successful and I, you know, but now I tell you all the time, I'm just very, I'm Scorpio. Okay. I am very sensitive. I am very emotional. Okay. I was just like, love y'all just the same. you (laughs) You know, it's like, I will read you for filth and then cry because oh, you read them for film. I feel so bad. And I'm just like, oh my, like I am, I am there. I don't even want to say I'm a sensitive thug. I used to be a sensitive thug. Now I'm just, I'm just sensitive. Like I am, like I want to be supported and I want to support people. And I want to like be treated as like a woman, like a lot of, for a lot of black women too. It's like people do not see us as like who we are individually. They'll see us as who they've already convinced themselves that we are. So like either that's because of how we used to be in our past. A lot of people still see me as this loud mouth, ignorant girl that would cuss you out in a second that had no ties or regards for anybody except for herself, like versus me now who like even back then, I've always been supportive of people. I've always helped people. But now you don't you're not going to get that fight out of me. Like I'm very intentional about who I cuss out nowadays. And it, I have to validate that through so many channels before I even allow myself to think that it's an option, <laughs> right? Back then it wasn't, it was, no, I don't like that and you're going to get it. But a lot of people still see me that way. And a lot of people still try me that way. Um, and a lot of them won't ever get a response from me ever again, like any type of response. But then at the same time, because I am such a strong woman, like people don't know, like I like flowers. I think, like, if you ever want to give me a gift, send me flowers. I love flowers. Noted. I love them. Like, they're so beautiful, and they smell good, and they just bring life to a room. And I just like, you know, no, I like flowers, and I like rom-coms, and I like to cuddle. <laughs> so Cuddling is, so, like, it's therapeutic. It's Let's really just, therapeutic. it's beautiful. It's one of those things that I need. So, like, it's my recharge. Like, I need to have cuddle time and snuggle and physically be close to people to feel warm and to recharge. So on Sundays when I do nothing, I'm usually cuddling. But either I'll have the kids come and watch a movie and my daughter, she's a snuggler. I love it. She loves it. Um, or I'll like, my best friends will come over and we'll just snuggle. We used to have, um, me and my stores um, from Bowie, we used to have um, cuddle time. Where we literally, we would go out on Saturday night and drink and party. And on Sunday morning, we would all lay in the bed and just, just cuddle. Go, and just lay. Just cuddle. <laughs> like, Here for it. We're, we're the cuddle crew. Like some things, like, like black women, we're not seen as women 
we're usually just seen as black people first and it sucks because we have a lot to give to people especially like in the realm of like love and compassion and peace and space and we are super we can do anything because a lot of times we have no choice but we don't want to like nobody, right just because i can do it all doesn't mean that i should have to absolutely like nobody wants to do certain things alone or at all but when it comes to necessity and circumstances that require you to step up black women absolutely like win that that race every time hands down however we get tired. <laughs> Hello. Okay, Hello. I can feel it. She is like the world's fastest woman right now. I'm sure she's tired, though. I hope she sat down for at least a week after that. I hope she is just... How broke. you break a world record 10, minutes post, 10 months postpartum, baby girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, she is amazing. That means your whole tw- 10 months postpartum, you was running. You were, training. you were training. I just saw an advertisement for her where she literally has the... And it's Beyonce. Has the baby right there on your hip, getting it done because you have to. And we, I think it sucks that we have to show up more often and come harder than other people to get equal or less recognition, which is why, like, I, my negotiation services, oh, you want a new job? Great. This is how you're going to get more money than you think that you're worth because you are absolutely worth a lot more. A lot of times you're still going to deliver. And you're still going to deliver. Even if you get paid, and it, it bothers me. It bothers me that I accepted so little especially in jobs and just from people in general for so long. Mm-hmm. It really bothers me. That it yeah. irritates me. That's probably like my only like real big life regret. I've accepted so little for so long from people and things that were just not even worth it. At all. Absolutely. And, you know, I would like to acknowledge the Malcolm X quote where he said, the black woman is the most disrespected person in America. Mm-hmm. The black, the most, unprotected person in America is the black woman. Like we really have to recognize that even though he said that in what, like the seventies, that shit is still true today. It absolutely applies. And the unfortunate part is when we, as black women, as magical as we are, don't see it in ourselves. At all. And that is probably the part that, you know, I started, I have my undergrad, my bachelor's degree is in psychology, right? Because I too. like a lot of people, <laughs> um, you know, children of those who had substance abuse and drug abuse problems, drug addiction problems, wanted to be a substance abuse counselor. But having that just compassion to want to help people who seem like they couldn't help themselves has absolutely carried over into my life. And now I'm more of a realizing that when you change your mind and you decide that you absolutely are worth can have will have whatever it is that you decide on there is no way that it can fail and my biggest issue with a lot of my clients is getting them to that point mm-hmm. and it's like there is absolutely no relax oh wait, first question how much do you want to make in your new job well i know i'm changing industry so i know i'm gonna have to take a pay cut why oh. for what what are you taking a pay cut for no. well i haven't worked in this industry so what have you been doing for the last 10 years working something Busting your ass for somebody. Value to to this industry, like you absolutely, absolutely, we don't do pay cuts. And when they and they always come with, oh, I want to make fifty thousand dollars a year. I was with that girl. Guess what? I don't, I don't even return a phone call for fifty thousand dollars a year at this point. Like, not even happening. Okay, at this point, we are playing the the what's that white man next to me making? Yeah, I want to make that plus tax. Yeah, because I already know he. I will be teaching him when I get into this world, whether he's younger than me or whatever the case may be, because that is my experience. So when people ask you, like, what's your biggest strength and all those things, my biggest strength is I can come into any organization and teach those who are supposed to be teaching me something new that can be of value to this organization. And for that, I am worth far more than what I asked for. Absolutely. Enjoy it. So, <laughs> and it brings up a very interesting point in just asking because I think there's we as black women have all these needs, mm-hmm. but that black superwoman complex, we don't feel comfortable even asking. Yeah. For example, um, something as simple as, "Hey, guy, I'm seeing on occasion. Can you take out my trash? <laughs> Would you mind cutting my grass?" Um, can you go pull around the car so I don't have to walk in the rain? Like there are people around us who would be willing to do such, but we're waiting for them to volunteer, which is trash, stupid. Which, but it's ingrained in us. Yeah, even if we're willing to take out the trash, he would. You spend any time on, 
Twitter. Now there are two sides of Twitter, right? And they call <laughs> what, do they, what do they call them? Um, the pick pick me. The pick me. <laughs> okay, and then there are the gold diggers. That, yes. That's it. That's it. There is no there in between. Is no women. middle for women on Twitter. I don't understand why. So absolutely, I expect for you to be able to help me financially or to join and combine some type of like your lifestyle with my lifestyle. We're going to be together. However, I absolutely can do it by myself and I don't need you to. And I am, you know, I I love it when women be like, "Mm, nah, if he's not willing to pay for this, don't go out. Because it, it completely undermines everything that generations of women have been taught. That is the only reason I like it. However, yes, if he's not willing to, he's absolutely out of the game. However, just because he's willing to doesn't mean you have to take advantage of it. That is where where my issue comes into play. But promote it. Yes, you need to understand your value and your worth. And it doesn't have to be monetary. It could just be, you know, valuing valuing honesty. For the longest time, I used to ask, like, what is it about me that makes people lie to me? Why can't you just tell me the truth? Like, what is it about my reaction, (laughs) which I learned, but what is it about my reaction that scares you so much from the truth that I have to be lied to? Like, what is it about me? It's not me, it's you. You're broken. You have weakness. You are fearful of me because I am such a strong and outspoken person. I get it. Granted, the way I said things probably wasn't always the best. Maybe. <laughs> but it does not change. It does not negate the fact that you are still choosing to deceive someone with your words, and that's just wrong. So right. like, I don't like taking advantage of people who bother me. However, you absolutely have to know what your value is and what your deal breakers are and what your boundaries are. Like you have to be able to say, um, if you're not willing to express your care by like the whole wedding ring thing why do i spend so much money on a wedding ring well you don't have to however if you're not willing to invest in a ring how do i know you're not you're be willing to invest in this relationship or a marriage or a household or a family like it's not always about the actual item or the material it, yeah. it's about the the concept and the, the thing behind it like the intention and purpose of it and then a lot of people miss that Yeah. And I think even beyond just from a dating perspective, even from a friendship perspective, um, probably about a month ago, I had been feeling like, woe is me. Um, I'm there for everyone. No one's there for me. Especially feeling like um, I wasn't allowed to have human emotions because Mm -hmm. I've stepped into the space of motivational speaker. That if I'm not motivating, if I'm not encouraging, if I'm not uplifting, it's dismissed. Right. And what I had to learn in my experience was sometimes it just takes reaching out to people and saying, I'm struggling. Are you available? Yeah. And there will be people that will show up, but I was expecting people to just know yeah, or just pop up and be like, Hey, how you doing? Right. And I'm like, horrible. Talk to me. And <laughs> like, okay, great. I have all the time in the world. Yeah, and that's just not how people function. But right. the problem was I would reach out to people I would see like a post on social media and then mm-hmm. contact them and be like, Hey, I saw your post about this. Is everything okay? You know, right. Just because I would initiate those kind of conversations doesn't mean that I don't have access to support just because it's not initiated. Right. And then, and that, that also goes back to people not seeing us in certain ways. Like, like I said, I started reaching out to people and letting them know I had businesses and asking for a dollar donation because I realized like my life just opened up a whole yoga studio. And as soon as she said it, the very first thing I did was started promoting her. I started sending out her link for her wish list. And she even said the same thing. Like, I'm not used to asking for help. You know, I sent it to people who ask, but I'm not just going to throw it out there. And I'm like, why not? Why don't we? Like, we're doing. Then you turn around and do the same. And then I was like, you know what? I do the same thing. I'm sending this out. Like, there's so many. I'm connected to so many people. And I see so many people. And they, like, they're watching. But they don't know everything I have going on because I've never said it. So it's like I'm expecting them to support something they don't even know exists. And if you leave it to social media algorithms, they may never see it. (laughs) So there are some, no, I will say there are some people that I do expect to just be able to feel and sense when I am in a mood and they absolutely come through. But that's because we built that relationship. That connection. We have that connection. I can literally, I can absolutely sense when my best friends are in a funk and I haven't spoken to them in a, in a three days. Right. And I'm putting them on like, Hey, what's going on? What's wrong? What happened? Who did it? Who are we fighting today? And they're the same way. Who I got to kill. You know, 
and I, they're the same way. And then for other people, you know, we have to establish that where they'll say things like the other day, like, hey, if you need me, I'm here. Mm-hmm. And then I actually take them up on that because I'm, I was famous for that. It's like, hey, if you ever need anything, I'm here. And then when my mom died, it was like, if you ever need anything, let me know. And when I needed things and I reached out to these people, most of them wasn't really about it. And I was like, oh, okay, so you're one of those. Okay, you're, you're not someone I can go to. Mm-hmm. But in that, I also found a lot of people that I could go to. Yeah. So, you know, I tell people all the time, my mom passing away was the most detrimental thing to my life, which is weird considering our relationship. But it was one of the best things for the type of, for the life that I live now, because it helped me to realize areas I needed to step up and then things like ways to get what I needed from mm-hmm. the resources that were still here instead of just relying on her all the time. So, yeah, we might have to bring you back for season two and just to talk about grief and, and what that looks like, because I remember feeling when I was grieving the loss of the twins, mm-hmm. it was the most lonely time I had ever experience so yeah. we're gonna have to have a whole nother conversation about greek and a uh, grief yeah. greek, uh but grief in the black community for sure we can talk about greeks in the black community too uh, we can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously yeah. i mean so what would you say is your number one secret to success <laughs> <laughs> not speechless are we um, number one secret to success i don't have any secrets Okay, so what do you attribute your success to? Like for me, my no, secret is I don't is have any secrets. That's that's my that's my number one. I don't have any secrets. Like you could ask me anything and I will tell you. Okay. Like, and it's like there's literally and this is something I had to learn how like the difference between um sharing and oversharing. Mm. <laughs> Cause if you I go, have that problem. If you go back to like my Twitter pages and my old blogs from like <sighs> Please don't scroll. When Twitter was Twitter. Like, okay. When Twitter was Twitter, Twitter is Twitter. still Twitter nowadays. Uh, you, like, now it's popping now. Nowadays, there's a lot of things that I, people will tell you 2007, 2008, 2009 Twitter. That was a real time. Like, if you go back to then and you look at my tweets, you like, this mother. <laughs> what was she on? Like, I understand why people don't see her as a different person. That you think. I get it. Because yeah. that one right there. Please don't ever scroll that far on my Twitter. Listen. It's like, you know, you think I was like, I should delete. No, I'm not deleting anything. I don't have time to go back and delete all of that stuff. Like, like tens of thousands of tweets. I, I know at some like when I get to a certain level of success, I'm going to have to pay someone to go back and clear that out. I'm but just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it. And that, that's the thing. I, I don't have I'm any scared tweets. to find out what's <laughs> <laughs> So like I mean, I think that that's a like not having secrets allows me to just be me. Like, and just yeah. own every part of my journey, the past, the present, the future, how I feel now, how I felt later, and just be authentic with my message and my story and my services and why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. So as long as I am true to me, which I've always tried to be, there was, there was about a good, I'll say seven years where my entire life was trying to please other people and trying to be this person that people wanted me to be because oh you're so mean and you're so unapproachable and you just say you know nobody can really we don't know if we can trust and it was just like okay well let me try these things and I was the only person that was worse off for any of that effort never again so the secret to success for me is knowing who I am staying true to that and having no secrets you can ask me anything about anything and I'll tell you the truth yeah I said that back then back then absolutely for all of this growth and all of this work that I've done on myself today this is the situation this is the case again I'll still cuss you out and read you for filth but it's going to take I actually have filters in place now look at the Lord (laughs) (laughs) okay so if you get it you deserve it okay hello do you have any final thoughts for the audience? Um, final thoughts. Um, find your, and I know it's going to sound super cliche and super United Kingdom, but find, like, find your tribe, like for real, for real. Yeah. Like, there is a network of people, women, family, friends, someone out there to help you through whatever it is that you are going through and to do it in a way where you are comfortable with them, where you feel respected um, if you do not have that already, you are in the wrong tribe. You have the wrong circle. You have the wrong support system. Because at the end of the day, it's just going to lead you to dysfunction and despair. And you're the only person that's going to have to live through that. 
So find your people. And if you ain't found them yet, keep looking. They are absolutely out there. And I am most grateful for my journey because I am finding more of my tribe, right? Mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm not the person who, like, I have best friends from, like, elementary school, but I'm not the one that you'll see, like, in the pictures with them all the time. Like, they, we have clusters of friends. Like, I'm always, like, the third will best friend or something, you know? Like, that's just my history because I'm always so all over the place. You know, I'm always doing other things or our lives don't align. Like I have kids and they don't or, you know, they're homosexual or, you know, and I'm straight and they want to hang out with all of their like um, homosexual and LGBTQ friends or they do more things in those areas than I do. And it's just like I always I used to feel like the extra, like a choice or an option. But throughout my journey, I've learned that there are some absolute solid people in this world. And that just because you're not physically with people, that, that doesn't mean that your friendship is less valued or less important. They're still there. Mm -hmm. so finding your tribe. And I mean, those are my true tribe members. Like, I love, love, love. And people are like, you still call me your best friend. You never hang out with them. So, your point? Like, we're absolutely family. There are family members I never see. But they still my family. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. But I love what you said about finding your tribe. And that's definitely what... 2019 has kind of been for me. Mm -hmm. I know there was once a point where I felt like I was kind of not focused, but I was giving too much weight to the people who didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you show up? Why weren't you there? Why didn't you contribute? Why did, and it got to a point where I just realized, I said, okay, but there are people who will ride for me. Yep. People I ain't even seen in years. Like my first best friend was the friend that I called and was like, I need to vent. Are you available? And she like, of Give course. me 30 minutes, I got you. Yep. And this is, like, when I say first best friend, I mean, like, since she was in her mother's womb and I was, like, six months old. I love it. Like, crib, crib mate, you know what I mean? Um, And then my godbrother, who I have not even seen since I lived in Buffalo when I was, hell, seven. Like, if, have not seen this man in person in two decades. He will buy a ticket. He will sponsor something. Like, he is always... Supporting. I have a cousin in Texas who literally, I only had to ask. She'll buy the book. She'll buy, don <laughs> donate a ticket. You oh. name it. You know what I mean? And just, and she's always sharing stuff and posting stuff. She has one of my shirts, which I actually need to mail her one of the cover shirts. But like, she'll wear it to work. Be like, oh, that's my cousin. <laughs> but instead of focusing on the people who, because I kind of was feeling like there were so many people who would say, like, I have other cousins who'd be like, oh, my cousin's an author. My cousin's a speaker. But she ain't never bought a book. Right. I mean, and that, and that, and that happens, you know, but again, like when you, you will truly know who your tribe, your tribe members are when you realize and start, stop looking from a place of lack and from a place of um, mm. strength and, and just blessed. Like I am absolutely grateful for everyone who's there to support me and they already, whether they know it or not, like as I go up, they go up with Hello. Me every single, like I have a list of folks like who may not even realize it, but like when I become a millionaire billionaire, like they have houses waiting for them. They have mm -hmm. bills paid for them. They have whatever their heart desires because the things that they have done have helped me to impact so many different people. And it's meant so much to me to kind of oppose like my own like brokenness and trauma from just life. And it's like, you never know who you are helping by just being genuine and being yourself. And being there for them, and that, like that, this year I think that this 2019 is the year of getting your, of finding your tribe for a lot of us because 2020 and beyond, like this decade, it's time for us to start making shit happen. Like there's a, there's a lot of stuff that I think, and I'm very, it makes sense now. <laughs> like yeah. childhood makes sense now because it's like I used to always feel like I was in trouble for everything for just opposing authority and going against this and that but it's because this generation of us change like change makers we're supposed to be changing this entire world mm -hmm. finding each other and it's it's amazing and you I'm know I'm ready child you know, I just want to say and I'm super blessed to like even have been connected with you like we're in the same story we know the same stories everything never once have I come across you and until 2019. Until 2019, when it's time for us to like lock and load and get ready for this. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. So I joined in 2010. I don't know if you wanted to know me in 2010. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. No, I don't know. <laughs> not ask, the same. But ask Tiffany, Tiffany Dot Bart. Keep yeah. 
She's my best friend. I keep forgetting she gets married. She's still in the still. Ask her about me. Back in 07 and 06, it was a yeah. whole nother story, okay? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know that you necessarily you wanted to know best friends back then too. undergrad. <laughs> I just, I, I was a different person in undergrad. Like, and I, I, I can't apologize, but so much for it because I've done the work. Yeah. To be better, um, but you ultimately, to be too. Child, I, if there was one thing I was, I, <laughs> listen, Virginia Tech owes me. I'm sorry, the state of Virginia <laughs> and North Carolina A and T owes me nothing. Okay, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> but I'm a changed person now. You okay. know, I, think I, I might, I might owe Bowie a little bit, but they don't owe me nothing. We had a good time. Oh, yeah. Listen, I don't owe Virginia a thing, okay? <laughs> um, but ultimately, just to put a little bow on that one, <laughs> what you focus on will grow. So I think with you, even with you just saying like finding your tribe, so that was part of my shift was like, if I focus on the, the healthy relationships, mm-hmm. those will grow as opposed to worrying about people who don't show up and et cetera. Just learning to put that energy Mm-hmm. where it belongs and then you start to see more of that good just okay. starting to come and you're just like Whoo. and it, you, it's a great point that you brought up is about the that mindset of lack mm-hmm. versus the mindset of prosperity but that includes our inner relational interrelationships mm-hmm. as well as like prosperity with energy prosperity with time all of those sorts of things and just being mindful of what we're giving attention to for and sure. we're giving our energy too, as well. Hello. You know, you know, we do, I do a lot of procrastination and prioritizing and boundaries work with my clients because mm-hmm. that's where a lot of I just want to just post a quick yeah. seven areas that most people struggle in. Yeah, and that those, was a good list, child. Those are the basic areas that I've realized, or I'm noticing a lot of people, and they're intertwined. If one is out of whack, a couple other ones are out of whack. You have to like that's home first. You absolutely, to, absolutely. First. And when you definitely about energy, I know one thing that I walked away from the miscarriage with the twins is I don't argue. (laughs) I don't, I'm not arguing with my mama. I'm not arguing in a romantic context. I'm not Mm -hmm. arguing with a friend. I'm not arguing with a coworker. I don't argue. If it feels argumentative, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we argue with it now and then, especially when I know I'm right. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fat puller, right? Like I'm a, I'm a document. I like to document things. Right. So I, I'm with you. And in my past life, I would die on that sword. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, when you literally lose, I lost two children in one mm-hmm. month, yeah. three weeks apart. And the only explanation was stress. Yeah. I'm not arguing with nobody's child. Right. When mine is in heaven because of arguing. Absolutely. I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And if you tell me the sky is pink. <laughs> And I see it's blue, and I tell you it's blue, and I present the facts that it's blue. I even show you a picture, and you're like, nah, homie, that's pink. <laughs> yeah. So I am with you there. I'll present it to you, and then if you're still, we're still on the same page, it's cool. So we're going to have to agree to be different. And that ain't cool. no problem. And I'm just going to no decide to deal or decide to detach, and that's it. You're right. Absolutely. Enjoy your pink sky, dear. God <laughs> bless. Like, I'm not going back and forth with you. I'm just, now, now we can debate. Yeah, we can have difference of opinion. Oh no, no. At this point, we can't. But even I'm not that. arguing. No. Now, <laughs> now, I will say a, a point of growth though is in that situation. Now I'm more compassionate to. Hmm. Maybe they really do see a pink sky. What are some possible reasons? And instead of trying to fix those reasons and being like, well, maybe they're colorblind. Hey, have you ever thought that you're color? Like I would be like, oh, well, I'm pretty sure they have a reason, and that's not my business. Carry on. <laughs> that point. <laughs> and that's not my business. That Carry on. And that's it. Like that makes sense. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, and where can people find you? Um, well, if you want to fly out to Wakanda, I mean Wakanda. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm gonna let you finish, but <laughs> Can we make this a real thing? Like, can we, I'm just going to put it out there. I am looking for reverse gentrification. I want a city, hell, a state. Like, can we all just reverse gentrify, like, the state of Georgia? Like, a lot of us are in Atlanta already. Like, can we just all pull up? 
Well, you know, you know what they did to Black Wall Street. So, you know, it's dangerous. But I think we're a different kind of generation now. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and we have more access and more resources to defend ourselves. But I just want one area. Y'all well, that's PG County. Huh? That's PG County. <laughs> it's not warm enough there for, for me, though. Oh, see. I love, I love the weather here. Because you get a little bit of the entire scope of seasons here. I love right. it. Summer for three of the four seasons. And then I might give you fall in the winter. I need, I need snow. I need my snow. No. And I don't do every year. You know, give me a good, I'm like, this is the perfect area for me. I will take the snow, like a hefty snow once every five to seven years. Yeah. And a little like trickles of it. And so my whole thing, even with PG County. So yes, PG County is a black county. It's the black, the richest black county in America. I can rock with that. I, I get it. But Maryland has its parts oh, where there's a whole lot of white people. Yes. Well, everyone is here to Waldorf, so. True. Literally. There's white people in Waldorf, though. There are, but they, like, they are kind of white people. I don't have a kind of white people. I'm I mean, like, 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 I, like, you're right. But, like, they, well, they're, like, like, they're, like, you know how, like, so, like, when I was growing up, like, we had this white family. They lived on, they both, they owned a house on each end of the street. They was cool. They knew where they was at. They ain't never had no problems. And if ever there was a problem, it was handled really quickly. Because sure the rest of the street made sure. Like I'm sure about that. You know, so it was like they was they was cool. <laughs> My best friend Catherine. Uh... My best friend, matter of fact, Catherine's home now. I can't wait to see her this weekend. But she, yeah, she like like she only date black or uh, she don't date white boy. I'll just say she don't date white men. Don't date them. Can't date I mean, them. Find them attractive. She's just like, nope, not for me. And I, I love her. She just so not for me either. But I also feel like I have a birthright to to date the men that I date. Absolutely. It listen. It's in my DNA to date who I date. Yeah, but no, yes, it, but I mean, out here, I we haven't had any issues out here in water. Same thing with Colombia. I love living in Colombia. I have. So I worked in Colombia. It's a lot of it. It's a different kind of white people in Maryland. I will give you that. I just, I'm just saying, I would like that to be I want PG County to be statewide normal. I I need my pockets of, of other folks. So I, love, I, love I, love I, love, I love us. But listen, they can you can cross state lines to get your fix of I will say I will say too though like my kids are not me, right? So like living in PG County, my son had a very hard time with the school system and like like again we're by, right by Landover. Mm -hmm. Those not that's not his tribe at yeah. all. Like yeah. the playing the dozens and rough housing and the way they wrote. He's too. He is very t in tune with his emotions. Not call my baby emotional or soft because he's not. He's him. But that was not but a healthy emotional intelligence. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Out here, the mix and the diversity. Like some of his best friends have like um, are white kids. Some of them are some, like Afro Latino. Some of them have some Asian and you know some of those. All of and they are like I love love the fact that he gets to experience this diversity of just people, and that he feels like he belongs. Like just watching him laugh and joke and play, it's like it's refreshing. For me, growing up though, that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> I'm like, child, y'all got this thing. You know, for me, it wouldn't have worked at all. My, and you know, my daughter, she'll say hi and be friendly to anybody, like to the point. And she don't, she don't care. This one lady yesterday, um, she's elderly. She has some difficulty walking, like a slant in her, in her step. And so not only does my daughter stare at her the whole time she's walking down the walkway, but when she gets close enough, she says, hi. She's like, hi, how are you? She's like, I'm good. She says, you know, it looked like when you were walking, you were hurting a lot. And I'm like, but you ain't go help her walk. You know, and, and, and I was going to say something, I let it go. And I was like, and, you know, the lady just kind of looked at her and then looked at me and then just kept walking. She wasn't rude or anything. And so afterwards, I was like, you know, maybe she doesn't want you to kind of point out, you know, maybe she's a little insecure, like kind of she, her emotional intelligence is just that looks weird. I'm going to say it looks weird. I'm going to say that looks weird. <laughs> it's just like okay. crazy. It's weird. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we find you. Um, I, was Wakanda. I was like, how do we even get Wakanda? Because yeah. Wakanda, we need um, to do with our own Wakanda. Waldorf is far, yeah. They say it's far, but it's really not. It really is. It, it is. Day. 
Um, so you can find me, um, teddyrene.com, uh, R-E-N-E, Teddy with an I. Uh, it bothers me people spell my name with a Y because, especially usually because I'm sending them an email and they'll reply with, like, my, it's right there. It's an I. So Teddy Renee, T-E-D-D-I-R-E-N-E.com, um, at Teddy Renee on Instagram, that damn underscore on Twitter. So it's Teddy underscore Renee. Um, and you can find United Queendom, um, Queendom spelled K-W-E-E-N-D-O-M at unitedqueendom.com, at United Queendom on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah, so all those places. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of our podcast. I'm excited. Thank you for having me. I'm so of excited. course, thank you. Yeah.